Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to show you how to use SEMrush keyword research to come up with blog content ideas to grow your organic search traffic. What you're looking at here is an actual screenshot of analytics from a client that we worked with in October of 2015. As you can see, I'm gonna show you the exact process that we use to come up with content ideas using keyword research in SEMrush to what eventually led to a 20x growth of their blog traffic. And as you can see, actually their three top performing articles of all time were a direct result of this work that I'm gonna show you in this video. So you probably will need the paid version of SEMrush. You can use my link in the description below or you can go to evolvingseo.com slash SEMrush, no spaces, to try it out free for two weeks. Uh, you might be able to do a few of these things for free, but you'll eventually probably want to spend the $69 a month. Uh, trust me, it is very, very worth it. I love this tool. I use this all of the time for our SEO clients. What I'm going to show you is how to come up with blog topics that you can then use to create hopefully 10x content that will result in better organic search traffic. So this method I'm showing you, it does assume that you're creating the best piece of content around the topic that I'm gonna help you discover uh, out there on the web. If, if you don't create the best piece of content, this method might not work, but this will show you the ideas how to get the ideas for the keywords to create the content around. So I wanna show you two examples of this using two topics, one in the kind of diet space and one in the space if you were targeting parents or mothers. And of course you can apply this to any industry, but these are two very popular topics and subject matters on the web that people write about all the time. So I thought I would use these two as examples. The basic idea of this is you're gonna find other popular sites that have written about your topic, but they haven't done a great job or their content is old or it needs to be updated. And this means that there's a content gap opportunity for you to fill. So let's say you're in the diet industry and maybe you're looking for a topic to write around around some kind of diet. Well, what I would first do is just kind of play around, just kind of search through Google of some popular diet terms for example here i've done paleo diet and what we're trying to do here is we're trying to come up with a website that we can eventually plug into semrush to use as our website where we can discover content that they've posted that might have keyword opportunity so what i've gone and done i've plugged paleo diet into google here and i have just kind of scanned through the results what i'm looking for is a domain to plug into semrush that kind of has a high domain authority because Often sites with a high domain authority, they're publishing a lot of content, they've been around for a long time, and they're not always, they're kind of be dropping the ball sometimes on kind of their content that might be old or becoming outdated or lower quality. And that's where you can come in and create something even better. So what I found here is this site, motherjones.com, they wrote an article about paleo diet in 2014, which is now three years old that I can see according to the URL here. So what I've gone and done, and this is what you wanna do, is go to SEMrush, and I've set up the whole search here for you, but I'll talk you through it. So you're gonna plug in the domain that writes around generally the topic that you're kind of looking for topics to write about. You're gonna plug that into SEMrush here. So I've plugged in motherjones.com. It's a little hidden, but you wanna to go to organic research and find the pages report. And uh, that's gonna be in the left-hand menu here. Once you get to the pages report, what you're first going to see is a list of all of, and I'll just clear this result here actually, what you're going to, lit, what you're going to see first is a list of all of the pages ranking for this domain, motherjones.com. And this is their most popular content from search. So their homepage gets the most traffic, and then they've got a politics article here that gets a lot of their traffic, and it, and it kind of goes down. So this initial list isn't super helpful, but if we filter it, and this is the magic in this report here, is now we're gonna find the content about paleo diets that are on motherjones.com. Now, what I found here is I've just found this one article that they've written about paleo. However, what you're gonna wanna do is right click on this keywords result here, and that brings us to this page. Now, this page is gonna show us the URL information for this specific piece of content. 
And as you can see, this is where all the so-called money or the value can be found. I can see that this one particular article is potentially getting uh, 1.3, 1,300 visits a month organically, and you can probably double or triple that for act the actual real number by 764 keywords. And uh, if you were to pay for that traffic, it might be over $1,000 a month. So right off the bat, I can see that this article that we discovered by just kind of searching around the topic, it's ranking in Google, but it's from 2014. And we, we've seen by filtering paleo for the domain motherjones.com that uh, it's ranking for a lot of stuff. So now the next step is to come in and say, okay, what is this article ranking really well for that maybe it doesn't deserve to that I can create a better, newer, more complete piece of content around and rank instead. So we're using this article to pre-vet the actual opportunity that you have to come in and create a piece of content that you can rank for. And so what I've gone and done here, and this is kind of the magic again in this report, is I've filtered it. So actually, let me just undo this so you can see the actual process here. I have, uh, let's reset this filter here. So when you land on the initial report, you're gonna see all of the keywords that this article ranks for. But I wanna know what are the keywords that this article is ranking for on the first page, because obviously that's where I wanna show up. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click Advanced Filter. I'm going to filter by position less than 11. So what this means is we're gonna get everything that this is ranking on page one for, according to SEMrush. And what I've gone and done here is I've sorted by volume. What I wanna see is the highest volume stuff that this article is ranking for on page one. And what catches my eye here is paleo diet problems. Now, this is a term that I kind of intuitively know from doing SEO for a long time, and as you hone your skills, you'll get better at it. But I see this ranking for position three. It's got 170 searches a month. There's a lot of kind of variations with the term problems. This could probably be a great opportunity. So if I go over to Google and I search paleo diet problems, what I see here is what I call a content gap opportunity. There are not really many articles ranking on page one currently that even have the word problems in the title tag that address this topic directly. And sort of the idea of identifying this content gap opportunity is, could be a whole separate video, but the short story here is that no, no one really, most people have not really written an article about, quote, the paleo diet problems or problems with the paleo diet. They're all kind of talking around this, but none of them are addressing it super directly. And so even though there's high domain authority sites ranking here, it's still an opportunity opportunistic area. And again, that's been vetted by the fact that this article on Mother Jones is ranking for paleo diet problems. Now Google's probably pulling in the synonym there, but the, the, the punchline is that you could probably create a piece of content that's newer, better, more complete, target paleo diet problems a lot better than all the other pieces of content here. And we found that in just a few minutes by using SEMrush, to figure out what this article is ranking for and the uh, potential higher volume keywords with a gap opportunity. The second example I'd like to show you is if you were targeting a, a uh, uh, if you're targeting mothers or maybe parents. And the technique here is that I'm actually using a very, very large website, in this case, Pinterest.com. I know it has a, typically a high female uh, audience, probably a lot of these, uh, the people that traffic Pinterest and use Pinterest are parents or they have kids. Uh, that's very commonly known to be a demographic. So you can use SEMrush to plug in any large website. It doesn't have to be a more niche website like motherjones.com. It could be Pinterest. It could be SlideShare for a B2B situation. It could be Quora if you're looking for maybe topics to answer questions about. So there's a lot of ways to use SEMrush to find keywords. In this case, I'm going to use Pinterest.com. This is an example that I sort of already knew about. So 
Uh, I've already kind of set this up here. So you're going to plug Pinterest.com into organic research. And instead of going to the pages report, you're going to go to the positions report. I find this to be a little bit quicker and easier with a large site. And you're going to filter by a word that potentially your target audience might be typing as a part of their searches into Google. So a parent is probably going to type some of the searches with the word baby in it. Uh, maybe the word nursery might be one, or maybe baby clothes might be another one, or maybe toddler, or maybe uh, kindergarten, you know, any of these keywords you could try. But in my case, I know that there's some opportunity with baby. So if I filter by the keywords that have uh, the word baby in it for Pinterest, now if I'm a high authority site, I could maybe just kind of use these right off the bat and maybe rank for baby shower ideas. But chances are you are possibly a lower authority site. And so therefore, we're going to want to use a filter here. And this is using SEMrush's uh, keyword difficulty um, metric, which is pretty useful. I wouldn't use it as a hard and fast metric, but it's a great sort of ballpark metric if you want to get something that's a little lower authority. So what I've gone and done, I've, I've said, show me the things that are less than 60 uh, competition. And so now I'm kind of weeding out some of the um, some of the higher competition stuff. And now what I want to do is show me the things that Pinterest is ranking for again on uh, page one, or actually the top of page one, so less than position six, so ranking one through five. And I'm going to show you why this is an opportunity in a moment. And now I'm going to go and do here is uh, search by uh, volume. And what's interesting is I'm seeing some Spanish result things here. You could possibly run some other filters to filter some more of that stuff out if you're not targeting Spanish, uh, the Spanish language, if you're just targeting English. But for now, I'm just going to show some of the ideas here, some of the opportunity. Uh, there was one that I found when I was doing this a little while ago. Let me see if it just shows up here. And then I'm going to show you where the opportunity is from. This isn't the one I initially found, but I'm going to show this. So this is a keyword that Pinterest is ranking number one for, and it has 320 searches a month. So here's the opportunity here. Baby's breath wreath. I have no idea what this is, but let's do a quick search. So here's why this is an opportunity. There are, Pinterest is ranking number one. <laughs> I apologize if you can hear my text messages going off. But sometimes Pinterest isn't always the best result for something like this. Now, this might be a little bit of a transactional search. So maybe it's more if you're selling this as a product. However, people might just want to browse a collection or get ideas of what this product even is. I'm not a parent, so I don't know what this is, but the opportunity here is often Pinterest is sort of a happenstance collection of this particular topic. Whereas if you can come in and create something that's an a, a, a actual solid blog post that kind of rounds up the best versions of these products, uh, it can often be a better result than Pinterest because, you know, sometimes Google will just rank Pinterest because it has a high authority. They know that, that it's pretty safe. Uh, Google doesn't like to go out on a limb a lot of times and take a risk by returning content that they think might satisfy users but might not. So they know Pinterest is a very safe thing for them to rank. Let me just see if I can find my other quick example here. Okay, here it is. Quilt made from baby clothes. This is an even better one. This is a little bit better because this is actually slightly more a, uh, a topic versus a commercial. It's more of an informational search versus a commercial thing. So people might want ideas. Oftentimes when Pinterest is ranking, you can kind of think of this keyword plus ideas. And so they're probably looking for, maybe they want to learn how to make a quilt from baby clothes, or maybe they want ideas of designs for this sort of thing. So again, Pinterest is ranking number one here. This is also where the opportunity is. I've got my Moz bar 
plugin turned on and I can see the domain authority, what else is ranking here in the results. And these are pretty low, 23, 29, 20, 20, 46, 26, 45. So again, I found a keyword gap opportunity here where there's not a lot of high authority sites ranking and there's not a whole ton of great totally on topic results for this keyword. And we found this using SEMrush for keyword research by leveraging a high traffic, a hugely popular domain that's targeted at our demographic. We've run filters to say, show us the lower competition stuff that's ranking really well. Because again, if Pinterest is ranking, you can probably offset Pinterest because Google will often rank in favor a better targeted actual piece of content versus just kind of a Pinterest collection of ideas, of random ideas. So those are two quick tips for SEMrush. Again, I've used these uh, exact tactics to come up with content ideas for clients to do what I'm showing here, for example, to 20x their blog traffic. So please uh, leave me any questions in the comments below. below. Once again, you can go to evolvingseo.com slash SEMrush or use the link in the tutorial below. Uh, you can visit me at evolvingseo.com and you can check out the Experts on the Wire SEO and Marketing podcast for a lot more uh, tips, tactics, advice about your SEO and online marketing. I hope you found this helpful and we'll see you next time. Thanks.